here, and I've been capturing patients with primary cell dyspnea. So it's great to see all the children here as well as our families. So for a while now, we've been trying to pull together a bid to national services to get ourselves formally designated as a diagnostic centre um, for PCD in Scotland. Um, so I'm just going to talk you through what we've done so far, why we're trying to do it and where we're at, so really just to update everyone. So this all started back in the uh, summer of 2018 and we I've talked about this before as we took advice from the support group and for families and initially we thought well we're doing biopsies for children but we weren't doing any for adults and then we recognised that really the adults needed the opportunity to have cilium their biopsies done as well just for anyone who don't, doesn't know that there is an existing arrangement for patients to go down south to one of the big centres down south to get their, their cilia checked um, but it was very much thought that a lot of people weren't actually taking that and didn't want to go all the way down to either Southampton or to Brompton to get their cilia checked. So people then weren't getting the opportunities. So we're trying to, to try and build this forward so we could have this in Glasgow. So the bit has actually changed and evolved quite a lot <coughs> over time. So there was a lot of paperwork to fill in and myself and my colleagues from pathology um, and the specialist nurses, we all kept filling all the, this paperwork for national services. And um, the, we had completed stage one, then we had to do stage two and we submitted stage two and then unfortunately national services decided to have a redraft of all their paperwork. So it was completely different um, what we had to fill in. Um, and um, also what we had to do was then ask uh, for it to be signed off at board level before we could actually then put it forward to national services. So there's quite big changes that happened. But in the meantime that actually helped us with, with the bid because the, obviously the field of genetics has, has um, significantly changed and advanced in the past few years and I know you heard from a pleasant team this morning about the genetics of PCD and there's been big changes made in the availability of kits to test for the common PCD mutations. So I began to have more discussions with our local genetics department here with Dr. Carol Gardner and she's kind of now working together. So now genetics is actually part of the bid as well as having the cellular biopsy done and all the other aspects of it. So it went into the summer of this year and I'm still waiting to hear back from the management apparently it's due to be tabled soon but that's kind of where we are. I just thought I'd let you know sort of what was in the bid so I tried to emphasise that it was important for people to get the right diagnosis. You know you've heard before that the, some of the symptoms of PCD are so common, there are lots of nasal symptoms, there are lots of coughing, loads of children have these things but you want to be able to say that if you've got these issues that you have access to the right person and the right diagnosis because you want to be sure that your child or even you as an adult gets the right treatment and tries to prevent any chronic damage. So we've had an excellent talk from Kath where I learned actually loads even though I've heard Kath speaking before about the importance of physiotherapy to try and help prevent infections and also I think it's hard with conditions like PCD and cystic fibrosis where you're encouraged to need, you need antibiotics to try and prevent infection, whereas nearly every other time the GP is told you don't have to give people antibiotics. So these are things to also to think about. But if, if you have the right diagnosis and you can say then to your general practitioner, look, I have this chronic chest condition, I need to get these antibiotics, or if my child needs these antibiotics, then I think it helps. Without that, it'd be difficult. I also said that if you don't get the right diagnosis and you don't get the right treatment, you can end up having to come into hospital recurrently. Obviously some people still need to come into hospital anyway because their chest disease is bad. But if you can get it early, diagnosed early, the thought is you can try and make this better for people. And there is uh, guidelines available, um, in fact there's loads of guidelines for how to manage PCD. So other things we've sort of brought into the bid where that you can be aware that you can also
also check what's called your nasal nitric oxide levels. So that's not freely available in all centres, but we've now built that into the bid as well as part of it. So that's like a screening test for PCD. So it's not always, um, it's not an absolute, so some people PCD have a normal nasal nitric, but in general it's a low level. Your differential diagnosis comes with your cellular biopsy, with the kind of high speed leg microscopy, but I'm sure you've seen all the videos of all the ciliaries. Or else there's when they're not coming very well. Um, and then obviously the lab spent a, a significant percentage of time, people like maybe have spent long, long periods of time with uh, doing electron microscopy and getting pictures of the cilia and trying to see okay what parts are missing. It's also to say, so you, not only do you get the right treatment, but you want to make sure that you don't get unnecessary treatments. So similar to what um, Ms. Kunandan was speaking about earlier, um, some treatments which we do routinely for blue year aren't always the right thing to use if you put PCD in blue year. Okay. And also similar, to if you have the right diagnosis, then you might realise that as an adult male you might have for some fertility problems or as an adult female you might also have fertility problems and that's worthwhile knowing. With the genetics as well, if you can identify genetic mutation, you can see look, we've got all this evidence before about what it's like for people with that particular mutation and whether they have more severe disease than others and that helps families understand things better. So I think the more information you can get about your condition, the better, the more, the, the better you can manage it. So what we've done is that we've said we want to be a diagnostic service just now. We want to be for children and adults. And then the result will then go back if it's to like whatever referring clinician has sent the patient in for them to then feed it back to their patient and say this result is positive, this result is negative, or this result is an in-between result. So we sometimes do the in-between results. And what we're also doing is we run meetings with pathology and with genetics, where we say, okay, this is the clinical picture of this patient, this is what their biopsy shows, this is the genetic result, if we have a, a genetic result, um, do we think in general this patient has primary cellular dyskinesia, or do we think that um, they don't, okay? And sometimes we still have people that are a bit in between but it's just to try and, we're all trying to learn more so we can give the patient and or the parent the best and most up-to-date advice. And uh, so, as I said, we're going to include nitric oxide and we're also going to use immunofluorescence as well, which we haven't put in originally, but we've taken further advice on that. And because there's now standard guidelines of immunofluorescence you can do on the cilia samples to further help you get a diagnosis, that's also part of the bid. So from a practical point of view, um, I know patients need to be put on a waiting list. They'll come once a month uh, to get their sample taken. They'll wait to see whether the sample's uh, adequate. And then if it is, they can go home. If not, it might have to be repeated. Um, Marie and Linda went to additional training down in Southampton, which they found very, very useful. So now they're finding it's a much better chance of getting a good cilia biopsy the first time because the children don't enjoy getting their cilia biopsy done. I don't know what the adults think about it but in general a lot of the children don't really enjoy it. So if you can get it right the first time then I think that's better. So um, it takes time for the samples to get analysed but in general the lab is actually working on them quite fast now. So before it sometimes would take a couple of months for the results to come back from mythology, but now it's coming back more within sort of three to four weeks. So as I said before, the genetics for PCD is developing and there's more and more information coming back. So what we've done is previously we had to send blood down to the own street, the lab down there, um, for them to analyse, but now our lab here is able to analyse for the common PCD mutations, um, and that should make it faster. It still takes time, but
but it should make it faster. And then we can correlate what we see with the genes, the genes with what the cellular biopsy looks like. Now we've also realised that there are common panels for the PCD mutations, but there's more to be learned, so that's where we're hoping to link in with Pleasantine Mill and the research side of things to try and get more information, again to try and improve the diagnosis. So we've done 30 biopsies in the past year. So in general, obviously the bigger centres are doing much more, but what this shows you here is where the patients have come from. So the, um, the green is Fatal Glass from Clyde, and that's one adult, um, the rest are all children. We've had patients from Dumfries, Forth Valley, Highland, Lanarkshire. So the, the paediatric patients are already coming, even without the bid to national services, they're already coming by the biopsy, um, and gradually, I think we will do more people, but we would like to have a properly funded national service, so we can really do this, to, you know, to a greater extent and to expand it further. The adult who was done was, was a positive result, and it was very useful, and just, this person said, I really found it really useful this could be done, because I wondered for many years what was wrong with me, and I didn't have a label, and had all these symptoms, and I, I didn't know what was wrong. And now I have this, I can know that in general this is how my life is going to be, though everyone's different, but it really helped this person to finally find out what was wrong. So that's kind of where we are just now. I'm hoping, obviously, that we've put a lot of work into the bids. There's many people have contributed from pathology, genetics. I mean, there's been a lot of people who've put a lot of effort in. I'm hoping that our board will say yes. And then I'm hoping then that national services will then say yes, but we're waiting to hear. But I'll keep you guys updated for what's happening. But I think it'd be really good and a really good step for patients to have this um, available here um, for children and adults for diagnosis. And then we can then work on, once we can get the diagnosis right, then we can work on the management aspects of things a bit more across Scotland. Any questions just now or do you want to wait for the question and answer session?